If you're an Indian woman who reads, you owe her. If you're an educated Indian woman, you owe her. If you're an Indian school girl, you owe her. Well, friends, I'm talking about none other than Savitri Bai Phule, one of the earliest crusaders of education for girls and dignity for the most vulnerable sections of society. Savitri Bai broke all the traditional shackles of 19th century India to herald a new age of thinking. As a new bride at the age of nine, when Savitri Bai moved to her marital home in Pune in 1840, her most prized possession was a book. Impressed by her thirst for learning, her husband, Jyoti Rao Phule, taught her to read and write, little knowing that this would lay the foundation for a whole new chapter in Indian history. In times when women were not encouraged to acquire education, Savitri Bai Phule earned the distinction of being the first Indian woman to become a teacher. Following her teacher training, Savitri Bai and her husband established the first school for girls in 1848 in Bhide Vada, Pune. Eight girls belonging to different castes enrolled as students on the first day. During this time, Savitri Bai also challenged another taboo of women not being allowed to step outside the home to work. Of course, the young woman faced a lot of opposition. In fact, Savitri Bai carried a change of sari with her every day as men pelted her with stones, mud and even cow dung as she made her way to the school. But undeterred by all the opposition, Savitri Bai opened another school for adults the same year. By 1851, she was running three schools with around 150 girl students. Believe it or not, 150 years back, Savitri Bai had set a precedent. She gave stipends to prevent children from dropping out of school. She was the teacher who inspired a young student to ask for a library for the school at an award ceremony instead of gifts. She even conducted the equivalent of a parent-teacher meeting to involve the parents so they would understand the importance of education and support their children. Along with educating women, Savitri Bai broke several other taboos that included taking care of the well-being of young widows, adopting a child, and even leading the funeral procession of her husband. In 1897, when a plague hit Pune, she was at the forefront. She even carried young Pandurang Babaji Gaikwad, a 10-year-old boy from Mandwa, to the clinic strapped to her back. Ironically, he beat the infection, but Savitri Bai caught it, and in March 1897, she breathed her last. Today, the school Savitri Bai had set up is a part of Pune's heritage walk, a reminder that her legacy needs to be carried forward for the generations that follow. Well friends, now you know why every Indian woman who is educated today owes Savitri Bai a debt of gratitude.